How you doing? This is Sean McVeigh with Sean's Outdoor Adventures. And today I am going to show you how I use my handheld GPS for hunting and marking hunting spots, finding hunting spots, everything like that. So in this situation, I have my GPS with me and I'm doing a quick walk down this gravel road. And what I'm doing is looking for key crossing areas and I'm going to mark those in the GPS. Then when I get home, I'm gonna pull it up on the computer using Basecamp, and I'm gonna zoom out on, you know, with a bigger screen so I could get a better view of the whole area. And looking at those waypoints that I marked in my GPS, I'm going to kind of see how the deer are utilizing the topography in this whole area here. Now, um, as I can see right here, there's a, a pretty significant rock exposure here on the surface going through here and that's one of the good things of um, you know doing like a quick walk like this and seeing where the key crossing trails are on something like a road like this because this is going to provide not as ideal footing as areas that don't have such a rocky outcrop like this and so this can kind of actually funnel the deer which is why you might not see this as easily driving up the road, but when you get out and start walking, you know, you can see that kind of thing. So I'm gonna be looking, especially when I get to the end of this little rock section here, to see if there's a, a pretty good trail. And if so, I'm gonna mark that in the GPS. But one thing I do uh, when I mark something in the GPS is I like to categorize everything. So this location where I am currently walking, I have a name for this whole public land. So every waypoint that I put in today is gonna to begin with that little name that I came up with. And they're doing a lot of logging here. And so I'm actually gonna call this log, L-O-G. Okay, so here is the end of the rock outcrop right there. So you come down and it turns into laurel right here. And you might be able to see there's a natural trail coming right here. So let me, let me get the, the GPS out here and we'll put in a waypoint. You can see my reflection as it's booting up. Hi. Okay, so that blue dot right there, or triangle I should say, is my location. And what I'm gonna do is X out of the, um, the map screen here and go to the my main screen. So here's my main screen. You can customize this however you want, but the key thing I'm looking for is my mark waypoint here. I'm going to hit mark waypoint. Now this particular unit gives me the op option to save it or edit it. I'm going to go right into edit it and rename it. Sorry for the glare here. Let me try holding it up more. All right, so I'm going to type in LOG and I'm going to do it all in caps and space. Now this is a rock. Sometimes I leave the, the vowels out, but I'll just put, type in rock for sake of argument here. Rock edge trail. Come on, check mark. There you go. Now I have to hit save on this particular model. I have to make sure I hit save there, otherwise I'm going to lose it. So now I have that waypoint saved. So now there's my waypoint. That little blue flag underneath the triangle. Now I'm gonna keep walking. Another thing I typically do is I categorize these types of trails. Um, and here's another one right here, like maybe seven yards from the other trail. And you can see the leaves, you can see the compressions in the leaves from the deer hoofs. So this is a decent trail here. And that one goes right down there. So right where these two trails come out, um, one thing I'll do is I'll, I'll find key travel corridors like this and then I'll hike back in the woods and I'll look for a good crossing trail using the topography as well. And those are the areas I'm gonna set up. I'm not gonna set up right on the road here. This is just to give me a, a snapshot of key travel corridors and how they're using the topography here. This, this road that I'm walking down here actually goes right up through a saddle in this mountainside and typically I like to look at saddles but because the road is going right through the middle of it obviously the deer aren't going to be walking right on the road here but they will head toward that saddle paralleling the road which is another reason why I would I would take this in and look for one of those power, perpendicular trails 
and um, you know, kind of set up in that area. I think I also started to say this, um, I categorize my waypoints by how good the trail is. So if it's a really beat trail, I'll put three exclamation points at the end of the name for the trail. If it's just an okay trail, like that was a okay trail. Um, you know, it wasn't completely hammered by the deer. So I didn't put any exclamation points. But if I find one that is beat to the dirt, and it's got a lot of fresh shine in it, then I'll note that. And that way when I'm studying my waypoints and I go back and look at it, I'm like, okay, yeah, I remember that trail. And one of the reasons why I bought this particular GPS, and this is um, the 680, uh, what is it? Montana, Garmin Montana 680T, is because this will take pictures. So if I find a good rub, a good scrape, or a shed or something, and I wanna, you know, help me keep my mental note of that exact spot, I'll take a picture of it, and it'll automatically put it as a waypoint if I want it to. All right, this is the next spot down that has a decent trail. Now here is a doe track. It comes together in the front, okay? And here is a buck track. They are spread apart. I have a little bit of a glare here, but I have the two main Oops, points marked now. And um, if I draw a triangulated point also, what would be good for heading up to that saddle, it would be right here. So where I have that peg, I can actually save that point. I can just click on this up here. I can say go to it. I can hit this little flag down here to save it. Um, let's just say go. Um, and then I, I can follow this track to that point, but I want to go do that because I think that the way the deer will utilize this area, they'll be heading up through that region toward the saddle, staying off of this road, but I'll also catch movement from these deer that will also cross the road, and that just enhances my chances of, you know, getting a deer in this area. Okay, I'm getting close to that area, and as you can see, this is what looks to be an old scrape right on the ground here. And of course a buck's going to do that in a heavily used travel corridors, you know, to leave a, leave a sign for as many does as possible. So now when you get to a spot like this where there's a good crossing area and good deer movement, you start looking for a tree to set up in. Now there's a good climber tree right there, but that's just a little bit close. So I'd kind of be looking about 20 yards away from here for another good tree and uh, keep moving. Quick interjection, I'm sitting here editing this video and I wanna let you know in, over the next couple months, I'm gonna be laying out some strategy videos for creating a strategy for different time periods of the hunting season. So stay tuned for the strategy videos. Okay, so that tree over there is where the scrape was. The main travel area that I was coming from is here. And then here is basically the crossing trail that cuts up this way. And you can see there's deer scat right here. And here's that other trail going perpendicular. I'm just gonna follow this one for a little bit. Here, whoa, here's a bunch more deer scat. And there's still flies all over it. And notice the habitat in here. It's just all laurel. And a deer can be laying down in this stuff 60 yards from me and I would never even be able to see it. So um, this is the kind of habitat I look for for the mature deer because um, the deer can hide from hunters in this stuff. If you're hunting in an area that's just wide open, you know, especially in gun season, it's easier for the deer to get picked off. Not so much in this stuff, which gives those bucks a chance to grow to a little bit of an older age. I'm always proud of myself when I mark a point in my GPS and I go to check it out, and uh, someone else has it sort of set up just from experience, from seeing where the animals are moving and stuff. But clearly this is someone's spot, I would say for gun hunting more or less. Or crossbow, I guess either would work. But I found this spot just by really looking at the maps. Someone else found it by sitting here for years and seeing where the deer or the turkey were moving. Wicked glare, but right after I turned the camera off, oops. I looked up ahead and there's a very faint, faint draw right there coming up to the top. 
so I dropped the waypoint right there and I want to inspect that because it's very faint if you can see that on there but that is just enough for the deer to utilize or the turkey or the bear and that right there folks is what sets this little point apart from all the rest of this area. And that's why I study maps, and that's why I go out and look at these spots. By the way, if you really get into this map reading, I just started a brand new channel called the Map Reading Challenge. I'll put a link to that channel in the description section of this video. Let me scroll up here. This side here coming up, I, I got such a glare. Coming up on this side is a faint draw as well, which goes right over to that one, which makes this up ahead of me a key travel corridor. All right, I'm just about at the top of the draw on this side, on the lower side here. And I'm facing right over that way is where I want to go. But you can see right here, there is, and you probably can't see it too well on the camera, but there is a, a deer trail going through this thick stuff. Um, you can see by the com compressions in the, in the leaves. Like here's a good angle. You can kind of see where it goes in right here. I'm sorry, I'm looking at this video and this is just not doing this justice as far as learning how to see the compressions in the leaves. So hopefully maybe in the future, I'll try to offer maybe at least one class in the summertime because in person would definitely make it easier for me to help people learn how to read this stuff on the ground. And there's specific reasons I also picked that waypoint based on thermals and other indicators like that. If you are interested by any of this, I am about to launch a new thing on my website. I'm gonna start doing some online classes, like webinar type things, for so that people, you know, from anywhere in the world could sign up and, um, you know, take those classes. It's just like a one session thing. I'm also going to be offering personalized map reading for your hunting spots, things like that. So go to my website, seansoutdooradventures.com. If that interests you, check it out. I am almost to my spot right there but there is a rock outcrop that you can't see from the topo, but on the edge of it, which creates an awesome funnel. Here you have a scrape right here from the last fall overhanging limb. And so I put myself right in the right area there. And once I got here, which is the advantage of actually getting out and scouting, is I can see there's a natural obstruction which is funneling the deer right around the edge of that spot right here, which makes this even better. I marked a waypoint where that scrape is. There's the one I marked. Here is another scrape right here, overhanging limb. Definitely hit up. Look at these all busted up here, right in here. And you can tell uh, that was a scrape last fall. Look at the leaves around. And there's that one little dirt patch right underneath this beat up place. Just not even 15 yards from that other waypoint. So, oh yeah, this is what I call an epicenter. This is where the deer are definitely moving and they're coming right up around both sides of this rock outcrop. They're coming across the top of it and up the other side of it, making where I'm standing and 15 yards over where that other scrape is an uh, awesome hot spot. I will have to set up a trail camera. Okay, I am now back at my house and um, I was going to um, go to the spot where I was today hiking around and pulling up on here, but then I was like, well, in case I want to hunt there, I don't want a bunch of people showing up there. So, I have a lot of viewers from the state of New York, so I just pulled up a section of the Adirondacks. Let's see, we have Lake Placid. Oh, I know some people near there. Drew, how are you up there in Lake Placid? So let's, let's zoom in a little bit on this area, and um, I will show you how I can put, or how I put points in the GPS from base camp. Now, that screen that just popped up, I have a lot of um, aerial photos that I've purchased and loaded onto my thing. And so it, it takes a while for that all to load up. So we're probably gonna have those popping up here um, as we do this. But I'm gonna just zoom in. So where was Lake Placid? I just saw it a second ago. Right here in the middle is Lake Placid. Let's just zoom into this area here a little bit. And um, all this green very often means, you know, state land of some type. And so, um, so here's a road coming through right here. I'm gonna be having those pop-ups, but anyway, so here's a road coming through here. 
and you can see these dotted lines are probably hiking trails and I don't want to be near hiking trails although you, or you could be snowmobile trails but um, here's a patch of hiking and here's some over here but right between here there is a saddle so there could potentially be movement in this region here but I don't I don't want to be near other people so right here this this spot right here I'm gonna come over here and get my little um, waypoint marker and this little spot here I can even zoom in on it a little bit for you <clears throat> and um, let me switch tools again real quick alright so right here we have a draw coming up right into this little spot right here with a draw going back down the other side so and it's right along the bottom of this sort of a it's sort of the ridge coming down into a spur right here and so I would definitely want to mark this spot and I can name it um, I, I usually you know pick a, um, a name so let Lake Placid LP I'm gonna call this any waypoint I put in here it's gonna start with an LP um, and since I'm going to go, let's say, scout this, I'm just going to number some waypoints. I'll just call this waypoint one and close that. Now, this was saved into, um, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the full sc screen on the computer here. All right, so this was saved in my collection up here. So um, LP1, it's listed over here. And I can right click on that. <coughs> and send to right there I'm gonna send that to the internal storage on my GPS right there boom so now that waypoint that I just marked in in base camp is now also I just sent that into my GPS which is connected to the computer here and that's how I have <clears throat> the topo maps because I have preloaded topo maps on my Garmin GPS and so when I pull it up on here I have that it's that easy folks uh, so it's a really nice tool and the points that I put in my GPS let me just go over that real quick so your waypoints are all listed over here and if I click on the internal storage on my GPS device so um, like this waypoint here if I made this waypoint while I was out in the woods I can right click on that send to and then I can put it I could click on my you know my internal I have a my collection on my computer I have a folder called waypoints alright so in my collection which is what's on my computer I have a folder that has a you know file in it called waypoints I click on that and I can say okay I already have it in there though so I'm just gonna cancel that so there you have it it is that easy as far as using Basecamp with your handheld GPS and I use that a lot um, for going back and forth with waypoints. You know, if I'm going to go scout a spot, like let's say I was going to Lake Placid and I've never been there before, um, I could punch in all the spots I want to check out. And then when I get there, they're all in my handheld GPS and I'm good to go. So if this is something that interests you and you want to learn more about map reading, um, I am now offering classes. Uh, you can go register for them through my website, seansoutdooradventures.com. And in there, it's basically I've got it set up to do them online. So you can go through one of those sessions with me. And uh, there's also ability for people to get personalized map reading for their particular hunting area. So I am Sean McVeigh. This is Sean's Outdoor Adventures. I hope some of you will sign up for those classes. And I hope to see you there. Till then, take care and God bless.